1 Kings chapter 17, the familiar text that the Lord speaks to us this morning. 1 Kings 17, we want to read verses 8 through 16. I'm going to read from the Christian Standard Bible, the CSB version today. Hallelujah. 1 Kings chapter 17, verse number 8. Then the word of the Lord came to him. Get up. Go to Zarephath that belongs to Zidon. And stay there. Look, I have commanded a woman who is a widow to provide for you there. So Elijah got up and went to Zarephath. When he arrived at the city gate, there was a widow gathering wood. Elijah called to her and said, Please bring me a little water and a cup and let me drink. And as she went to get it, he called to her and said, Please bring me a piece of bread in your hand. But she said, As the Lord your God lives, I don't have anything baked, only a handful of flour in the jar and a bit of oil in the jug. Just now, I'm gathering a couple of sticks in order to go prepare it for myself and my son so we can eat it and die. Then Elijah said to her, don't be afraid. Go and do as you have said. But first make me a small loaf from it and bring it out to me. Afterward, you may make some for yourself and your son. Verse 14. For this is what the Lord God of Israel says. Hallelujah. The flour jar will not become empty. And the oil jug will not run dry. Until the day the Lord sends rain on the surface of the land. So she proceeded to do according to the word of Elijah. Then the woman, Elijah, and her household ate for many days. The flour jar did not become empty and the oil did not run dry. According to the word of the Lord, he had spoken through Elijah. Let's look at one more verse of scripture this morning. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke chapter 6, verse 38. Luke 6, 38. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. Thus far the scripture lesson. We want to continue this morning in our series faith for trying times and I want to focus our attention on this thought while you're getting the blessing don't forget to learn the lesson while you're getting the blessing don't forget to learn the lesson we all face challenges that look permanent as if they would never turn around. Dreams and goals that seem as though they're a long way off. It's easy to get discouraged and accept that it's never going to work out. But what you can't see, child of God, is that God is working behind the scenes. What he promised you, he still has every intention of bringing it to pass. The intention of God is not just about blessing, but it's about you learning some lessons. The current cultural climate is very uneasy. Tension and unrest has saturated the atmosphere. The pandemic the problematic political thrust as we are here in these United States determine who will sit in the White House 
for the next four years in just a few days with millions of Americans already casting their vote. This is on the conscience of many. Yet I wonder if we have learned the lessons of justice and equality for all men. There is indeed a groaning in the earth on every level, from fires in the west, storms in the south, and a continual racial unrest everywhere. There is a clarion call for the manifestation of the sons of God in this hour. Sons and daughters who are learning the lesson. We have knowledge. We have information. But we often lack understanding. I believe that God is speaking to the church very clearly in this hour. He's speaking to you and I. We must recover apostolic preaching. That is the faith that once was delivered to the saints. We need the living presence of Jesus filling our lives. And we must live our lives with our heads and our hearts in the game called life. We must live by faith. Be empowered by the Holy Spirit. We must in this hour do all we can to remain united as the body of Christ. The enemy's main objective is to divide the body. When the body is divided, they cannot stand strong. We must remain united. We are the expressed image of Jesus Christ in the earth. And while many voices are arising, the church must arise in this hour. We must hear God's voice, see God's plan, speak his word. I'm going to say it again. We must hear God's voice, see God's plan, and speak his word. I'm going to say it one more time. We must hear God's voice, see God's plan, and speak his word. You're trying to see God's plan before you hear his voice. You got to hear before you see, then you can speak. You're trying to speak before you hear, and then you're trying to hear, and then not being able to see. When you hear God's voice, you will see his plan. Then you will be able to speak his word. We must boldly declare, Without compromise, the word of the Lord. We must be cautious. Listen to me, saints. We must be cautious not to take into our beings the language and confession of a hurting people, even if we are the hurting people. I'm going to say it again. We must be cautious not to take into our beings the language and confession of our hurting people, even if we are the hurting people. While the cries are real, their confessions can be binding. We must counter culture, counterattack the voice of a culture who is speaking contrary to the will of God. I don't care how good it sounds. I don't care how descriptive it is of the carrot crisis. If it's not the will of God, we must not say it. Stop saying I can't breathe. When God says I will be in you breath. 
and I will breathe through you. Stop describing what you see and say what God says. The church must not agree with the world no matter how descriptive it is. We must say what God says. Hear me, church. Hear me. We must say what God says. God only moves at the sound of his word. We must live by faith and have such a faith that touches every facet of our lives. God calls us to have a type of faith that defiantly resists impossibilities, a type of bold, offensive faith that stirs down the laws of what physically may appear immovable and commanded to bow to the name of Jesus. It is this kind of faith that pleases him. Hebrews 11 and 6 tells us, and without faith living within us, it would be impossible to please God. For we come to God in faith knowing that he is real and that he is a rewarder of the faith of those who give all their passion and strength into seeking him. You see, Abraham needed faith to seize the impossible promise of his child in the old age. Noah needed faith to build the ark despite the ongoing echoes of mockery from those all around him. David needed faith to take down the giant when all the rest of the people of Israel were too afraid to confront him. Daniel needed faith to continue worshiping God despite the threat of being thrown in the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego needed faith to trust God as they refused to bow down to the idol. Their faith carried them into their faith carried them through, and their faith carried them out of the fire. What are you saying, Bishop? Your faith is the, is the installation for your difficulty. Your faith will cover you in your struggle. God is looking to see, is there somebody who still believes me? Is there somebody that still trusts me? Is there somebody that in the middle of the rough and the tough times that will still stand for me and declare that I am Lord and hold on to my promises? We want the blessing, but we don't always learn the lesson. We want God's favor, but we don't always want his instructions. We want the miracle, but we don't want to apply the message. We want the abundance, but we don't want to stay and wait for the anointing. God, help us today. We want to be blessed. But we've got to learn the lesson. I pray for the church. The prayer that Jesus prayed. Kingdom of God come. Will of God be done. Why do you pray that so much, Bishop? Bishop, why do you pray that prayer teaches your ways? That we may walk in your path. Because I believe God's will can be superimposed on the earth in such a way that it is consistent with heaven. Jesus would not have given us these instructions if he did not intend to answer and to bring it to pass. Here we have the greatest opportunity we have the great hope that even in this time frame through our partnership of intercession in concert with his will that the kingdom of heaven can come into this dimension this is the essence 
of effectual fervent faith that is synchronized with heaven. We resonate with the plans and purposes already in the heart of God. And we become the receiver of that impulse from the creator. We are on this side of heaven. And on this side of heaven, that means as it is in heaven, it can now be transmitted into the earth. Jesus consistently modeled for us in his prayer. We must emulate it too. All we must do is draw close enough to the Father to hear his still small voice and learn the lesson. It's amazing to me how many blessings God gives out and we abuse them because we have not learned the lesson. God blesses us. God is not void of blessings. God releases blessings. But I think the challenge to his people today is to be mature enough to be able to handle the blessings that he gives out. As I prepare to bring my message to a close, reading the text, it may be easy to see the blessing, but not the lesson to be learned. Far too many times we get the blessing and we miss the lesson. Here in 1 Kings chapter 17, the prophet Elijah comes to deliver a message. There is famine. He opens the chapter. That it will be no rain nor dew until he speaks again. And so they are immediately brought into famine. Famine is in the land. Now you have to understand something about the Old Testament. God's prophets usually show up because something was spiritually wrong with God's people. And that problem that they faced in that day was associated with idolatry. The spiritual breakdown in Ahab's day had reached monumental proportions. God's prophet stood between the people and God himself as sort of a last resort before God would have to address the issue directly from heaven. That would bring severe judgment. Elijah appeared at Ahab's court, boldly announcing in God's authority that there would be no dew or rain whatsoever except as he commanded. Now you have to understand something. This was a direct attack on the God of the land. It was attack on Baal. Baal was a fertility god. His worshipers depended on him to provide rain to ensure good crops. Elijah demonstrates that the Lord alone, his God, is in control of the natural world. God is our source. But let's understand the problem. Israel was caught in idolatry. It means they had messed up worship. Allegiance wasn't where it needed to be. Worship 
wasn't from a pure heart. Oh, I hear the Holy Ghost. Worship was selfish. I'm going to praise you because I want something. Worship was not a total abandon to his will. Worship was given based on what I feel, my perspective, my desires. You see, my brothers and sisters, anything, anybody, any thought, any ideology that takes you from giving God all is in danger of becoming an idol and leading you to a path of divided worship. Israel was in idolatry. You have to understand also that Elijah was told by God to go to Zarephath. Zarephath is in Zidon. It is a Gentile nation. He is told to go to the Gentile nation and I'm going to provide for you in the place where they don't honor me. See, Elijah's announcement placed him in danger. So God told him to leave the city and go to the country. He went to that brook. You know the story. He was fed by unclean birds, ravens. Let me tell you something in this hour. God will use the enemy to bless you. God will use what you say is unclean to give you what you think you, what you need. Let me tell you something. Never, never, never question how God's going to move. Just know he's going to move for you. Elijah. Obeyed and was nourished by ravens. He was nourished until the stream dried up because there was a drought. Listen, if you want God's blessing, don't move ahead of time. God will always give you the indication when it's time for you to move. You're trying to move and the brook ain't dry yet. In other words, he's still got some supply for you right here. But when the brook dries, he will let you know it's time to move. God's provision. God's provision. And you have to see the lesson here. Because we get excited about the widow's blessing. But we don't understand that God is teaching the prophet a lesson. Oh, that preaches by itself. Because you have to understand here that, 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 that the challenge to the church is that we think we know it all. And God always has a way of letting you know you don't know everything. <laughs> he said, I'm going to deal with the prophet. I'm going to teach you a lesson, Elijah. I'm going to teach you, number one, that I can provide for you in a place where you thought there would not be any provision. God's provision for his prophet continued his mission. God sends Elijah to the Gentile country, of Zarephath, and he meets the Gentile widow who would provide for him. When God allows his provision, I got to say it again. When God allows his provision to dry up in our lives, it's because he is ready to do a new thing or move us in a new direction. God was preparing Elijah for some great tests of faith. He would soon face Mount Carmel. He was teaching a lesson to the prophet that he could provide whatever was needed both for him and others. 
God was also using this opportunity to bring a blessing to a Zidonian household. Zarephath was a hot, dry village. It's modern day Lebanon. This was the home turf of Jezebel. So in a sense, God had sent Elijah to the idolatrous Baal bet belt where the spirit of Jezebel was on the rise. You do not have to be afraid of a Jezebel. You just have to recognize the spirit of Jezebel. I've encountered a few Jezebels in my day. And you know why I wasn't afraid of the Jezebel? Because I was not going to be the weak Ahab. Jezebel only hangs with weak-minded Ahab. Jezebel gets upset when she can't have her way. The problem is it's too much of the spirit of Ahab in the land. We are fighting. We want to fight Jezebel. But Ahab was the king. And he was a weak-minded man. And it's a bad combination when you got a wicked woman and a weak-minded man. You have to understand that in the spirit. This is why in the New Testament writing, we are told by Paul and Jesus that we must be strong and be strengthened because Jezebel preys on weakness. Hear me, that ain't my message, so I got to get off of that. Elijah was going into the enemy's territory to demonstrate the Lord is the true God and was the power over creation and can even provide in the midst of the enemy. Zarephath was suffering the drought too. When Elijah entered the town, he met a poor widow and asked for a drink of water and a piece of bread. She got the water. But providing bread was another matter. You see, her and her son was on the verge of starvation. And there was only a bit of flour and oil left. And she made the declaration that I'm going to prepare the last meal. Me and my son are going to eat it and die. No vision, no, no strategy. She just could only see the immediate. Elijah challenged the widow to act on faith and feed him first with the last of her flour for bread. She knew that the Lord was his God because she answered and said, as your God lives. It's an important part in the text because whenever you acknowledge the true God as the true God, you give him an opportunity to show his mighty strength. Hallelujah. She knew the Lord was his God, and Elijah was declaring that the Lord God of Israel would supply her needs if she trusted him. The widow believed God's words through Elijah. And she did what he said. And here's the results. It was provision for many days. Provision 
for many days. Her flower jar did not become empty. Her oil jug did not run out of oil. Even in the face of a famine, she acted in faith, trusted in the living God, and he provided. This, my brothers and sisters, presses into us the words of Jesus that's recorded in Luke chapter 6, verse 38, that we must grasp this principle as the lesson that we should give others the very thing we wish God would give us. And when you, when you give others the very thing we wish God would give us, it opens the door for God to move for us. Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed out, shaken together, and running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. As I close, three things. I'm trying to be calm because I feel the presence of the Lord. And I told, I feel like the Lord said you got to make sure they get it. There's some things you've got to get. You're going to be blessed. But make sure you learn the lesson. Number one, you must have continued obedience. Continued obedience. The prophet demonstrates for us in the text continued obedience. He said what God said. He moved when God moved. Said to move. He continued the, the, the lesson is continued obedience brings you progressively into the plan of God. You must have continued obedience. Number two, you must have a catalyst for the overflow. What do you have that God can use to bring you overflow. You possess something. You've got something within you that will become the catalyst for overflow. God will send a word that will stir something in you. I pray that your gifts, your talents, your creative ability be stirred like never before in this season that you'll begin to see God use you mightily, that dreams and visions and plans, blueprints will begin to come alive in you, that spirit of entrepreneurship will be stirred in you again, that you will arise and understand that all that you need, you already possess. Let it come alive in you. Number three, as I close, Number one, you must have continued obedience. Number two, you must have a catalyst for overflow. And number three, you must have the conviction in the powerful victory. Understand, God will give you victory. And while you're getting the blessing, don't forget to learn the lesson. I felt the Spirit of the Lord stir me yesterday afternoon in prayer. As I was preparing to preach, and I had prepared to go a different direction. I did, I did. I had a whole trajectory that my message was going to go because I wanted to end faith for trying times today rather than next Sunday. 
But the Lord spoke to me. And he said, Sterling, you've got to stir the people to learn the lesson. They're trying to learn what the culture is saying rather than what I'm saying. They have picked up the spirit of the culture and they are not saying and doing what I'm saying and needs to be done. I need you to speak to them. So as I wrote some stuff down, I called two people. I called my dear friend, Apostle Coates. I said, let me run something by you. And I shared with him what the Lord said to me. And he said, Sterling, that's what the Lord is saying. He said, thank you for calling me. You confirmed what I just wrote in my new book. There is no way you could have known it because my book ain't been released yet. I hung up from him and I called my wife. She was upstairs. I said, let me say what the Lord said to me because listen, if people walk with you, you should be able to share with them what the Lord is saying to you. Confirmation should come from within your house first anyway. Somebody need to back you up, amen. <laughs> and she said, that is what God is saying. I didn't know what, I said, Lord, okay, I, I, I hear you. And then God began to unfold to me that the coming days for many may seem turbulent and trying and it's not based on who's in the White House it's going to be based on the spirit that's rampant in the land he said but if my people learn the lesson grab hold of my word they will be strengthened. They will be empowered. Oh, glory to God. They will not have lack. And they will be able to abide in peace in the midst of turbulence. For my hand is for my people. So, Lord, teach us your ways. Let me way walk in your path. Teach us that we may walk in your path. And while we get the blessing, let us not forget to learn the lesson. Come on, lift your hands right where you are and just bless the Lord because God has something great in store for you and your family. Come on, just begin to worship God because I feel a fresh anointing coming your way. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh. Listen, those of you that are watching, one of the greatest lessons you could ever learn is, is the gift that he wants to give you. And it is the gift of salvation. God loves you so much that he gave his very best. He gave himself for you. If you never made Jesus Lord of your life, I invite you to give him a try. Our prayer counselors are there to share with you. You right where you are can lift your hands up and say, Lord, save me. And he will. Because whoever calls on the name of the Lord, they shall be saved. If you stand in need of someone to agree with you, you stand in need of someone to, 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 to pray the prayer of faith with you, 
Our prayer counselors are waiting. Join them. Understand, God wants to do so great things in your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Maybe you're, you're sharing with us in worship and you want to be a part of this family. You can. Our prayer counselors can tell you there. You can go to our website and there's a connection card and you can become a part of our, our, our virtual church family. We invite you to do so. Listen, God has some great things in store for you. Let the power of God overtake you in your life. Amen. Amen. And amen. The mission of Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries is to fulfill God's purpose and extend His kingdom to birth a people of purpose, passion, and power for the transformation of the world. People that are committed to God, that celebrate one another, and cultivate their community. Do you need prayer? Do you desire someone to stand with you and agree with you? Look no further. We have I Prayer available for you on Sundays between 12.30 and 1.30 p.m. Our elders and ministers are there for anyone in need. You can dial in or connect via Zoom. The dial-in number is on this flyer, and the Zoom link is posted in the description of the live broadcast. Next Sunday, join us virtually for our afternoon connection service at 12.30 p.m. We will be streaming right here on Facebook Live. Log on with the expectation to see a mighty move of God. Citizens of KLCM, as our apostle mentioned last Sunday at the close of service, we have been given a special opportunity to broadcast a Christmas service that will be shown on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, and the week of Christmas. But we can't do this without you. There are some things that we need in order to get ready. We are asking all of our KLCM family to partner and share with us with a $10 Christmas seed. If you're mailing it in, please label it Christmas seed. And if you're sowing online, you can put it under other. Remember, when you sow unto God, he will sow back into you. Tomorrow, please join us on Facebook Live for Engage, the introduction hosted by our very own executive pastor, Eric Rollins. We will go live right at 7 p.m. Make sure that you're logged on, tuned in, and have an expectation to hear a word from the Lord. Are you up early in the mornings? Then please join the KLCM prayer line on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 a.m. and be led in prayer by our very own Apostle Sterling Porter. All you need to do is dial into the conference call number and enter the access code. The number is 712-770-4010 and the access code is 645-162. Please join us for our Hour of Power teaching series, A Better Way, A Better Life, the study of the book of Hebrews. This Wednesday at 7 p.m., Apostle Sterling Porter will go live right from Facebook. This is a series you don't want to miss. Also, at 7 p.m., our children's ministry will have their own teaching live on YouTube. To find our YouTube page, go to youtube.com or open the app and search for Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries and look for our logo. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our page. On Thursday at 7 p.m., Elder Ralph Wilson will go live on Zoom for our youth Bible study. The Zoom link will be posted on our Facebook page. This is primarily for the 13 to 18 year old age group. We ask that all adults, unless you're a parent of one of our teens, not to join the live stream. 
we want to ensure that our teens have every opportunity to interact with their teacher. We appreciate your understanding. Elders and intercessors, please be reminded that we will have prayer this Thursday at 6 p.m. on the conference call line. For more information, please contact Elder Tanya Armstrong. Attention leaders, we will have leadership prayer this Saturday at 10 a.m. Prayer will take place on Facebook Live. We are looking for all leaders to plug in. Even though we are not meeting together physically, we still need and are looking for you to be faithful in your tithe and offering. We have five ways available for you to give. You can download the Give Plus app and search for Kingdom Life Cathedral Ministries and follow the instructions. Text to Give is also now available. Just send a text to 304-398-6627 with your giving amount, then hashtag tithe, offering, building, speaker, or pastor, and then click send. It's that easy. Note, if it's your first time, you will be prompted to create an account. You can also give online at www.kingdomlifecathedral.org and scroll until you see the online giving banner. You can also give via the mail, sending it right to our P.O. Box. That information should include KLCM P.O. Box 967, Ranson, West Virginia 25438. And finally, you can bring it right to the church between 9 a.m. and 10 a.m. and a member of our security team will be there to receive it from you. Miss the announcements? Don't worry, you can watch the replay of this service or head to our YouTube page and watch the announcements there. Thank you for your attention during the announcements. Remember, it's your moment of time, live the kingdom life.